Good morning, princess, and welcome, members of the court. I am on my way to Orlando. Yes, it is October 1st, the 40th anniversary of Epcot. I will not be going uh, to that because I don't have a pass, and even if I did the pass, I would have gotten, wouldn't let me in on, on Saturday. So that's okay. 51st anniversary, of course, for Walt Disney World as well. But that is not the important part. Yes, I am on my way to Orlando. It is that October 1st, right after Hurricane Ian. Uh, paid us a visit mostly on the southwest coast of Florida in the Fort Myers area, uh, an area I know very well. Still have some loved ones there. Everyone is fine. Uh, the property is fine. Everything is good. And um, and we're all quite sure they will recover. So what I wanted to, I don't know, just talk a little bit about while I'm uh, sitting here charging up Miss Liberty. It is free right now. So um, that is <laughs> that is a benefit, I guess, is about... Well, after the hurricane, after the storm, what do people do? I know everybody's going to uh, see the pictures and the video of uh, the destruction. But, you know, people still have to live their lives. And we get on with it afterwards. And, uh, well, my experience having lived through, uh, well, lived through <laughs> a number of uh, famous storms. You, I don't want to say develop a routine, but there's just some things that, that happen. And, uh, well, let me just share... What you're not going to see on any of the reports. So, number one, uh, I will just say that unless you are in a known safe structure, uh, the best thing to do is leave. Although I will admit that we have never left the palace in a storm. But um, yes, uh, it is built quite sturdily and has survived everything Mother Nature has thrown at her, including the worst of Hurricane Andrew. So... We are pretty confident that uh, we can ride out the storm uh, at home. The worst part, of course, is not having electricity. The longest we were out was after Hurricane Andrew, and that was about four weeks, I think, maybe a little bit longer. Averages, you know, it depends. Uh, it could be just a few hours, a couple of days. I think Wilma had us out for a week or so, but yeah, it comes back, and then we just get on with life. So. Anyway, during the storm, it is kind of what you see in the pictures. Uh, for me, like, the wind itself isn't scary. The rain's not so scary. Uh, storms are, or hurricanes are mostly wind or water events, like flooding events, not necessarily rain events. What uh, I find, I don't know, uh, the worst is it's continuous. It doesn't stop depending on where you are. If you're near the eye wall, it doesn't stop for hours unlike a normal thunderstorm that blows right through and then it's over, or even the outer bands, they come in the main part of the storm, it just continues to blow and blow and blow, and it can last, um, well, overnight almost. And, well, during the storm, we sleep. Yes, we sleep. I have slept through most of the storms um, that I have been here for. Well, I've slept through pretty much all of the storms that I've been here through because once the power goes out, there's not a whole lot to do. Especially if it's night, you get tired and might as well go to sleep. And, uh, you know, the dogs, eventually, they settle down too. Uh, they seem to get uh, the most nervous before the storm really hits. They can sort of sense something and they know something's going on. But after a while, uh, if you don't freak out, they're going to calm down and, and they'll be fine. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, if you do evacuate, of course, take the pets. Why wouldn't you? Uh, the shelters here in Florida, I'm pretty sure... Uh, either do allow pets or they will direct you to a place that does because they know that there are a lot of people that will not go to the shelter if they can't take their pet. So uh, best be in the shelter with your pet than uh, at home if you're in an unsafe structure. So uh, that's for <laughs> that's for everyone to determine. All right. After the storm. Wow. Okay. So first thing, wake up and dispel that fleeting hope that you have power no, it's not going to come back on miraculously during the storm. So, uh, yeah, but there's always that that little glimmer of hope. Then, well, uh, look out the window and see how bad it is and uh, kind of figure out what your day plan is going to be. Now, the first thing, if your location is secure, the house is secure, there's no broken windows, you're not flooded, then first thing to do is make sure you can get out. Uh, we have had this problem and uh, <laughs> uh, it can take a little bit of doing. Uh, well, I mean, we have multiple exits. So step one, find an exit that is clear 
and then go out that one and then maybe go clear um you know where you want to go the the front door you know get to the pool or the garage or something like that then check on the cars make sure they're okay uh you actually never had a car damaged in a storm either so that's uh that's pretty good and then um kind of just see what you're gonna have to do uh clear a path so you can get to the street uh after i guess it was irma uh but they all kind of blend together uh i had to clear the driveway away from a clear the drive clear a fallen tree away from the driveway so we could get the cars out and it didn't take too long the branches fortunately were not that big uh so just a few minutes to uh hack through them and you know make a a, a way to get out and uh well then uh check food check water we always have plenty of that don't open the refrigerator unless you need to because that lets the cold air out and then well after you've determined the house is secure the cars are secure everyone else is secure the pets are secure then um yeah uh, you start clearing away what you can around your house, right? So go out in the yard, start picking up branches and leaves and debris or whatever, just to make things use usable if they need to be like the patio. But, um, well, uh, property is kind of large. We don't do it all ourselves. I'll get to that. But just to make sure, uh, nothing is really where it shouldn't. Pulling branches out of the pool, uh, that's one thing. They just don't belong in there. And the longer they're in there, the worse. So yeah, get those out. Then, once uh, the property is, you know, kind of settled and you've kind of done everything you can, it's time to get in the car and go for a drive and see how the neighborhood is. And uh, this this is, uh, well, it's kind of varies depending on where you are. Uh, fortunately, uh, we've never had a problem getting out. Uh, well, no, um, Andrew did present a problem. I, I did arrive, I think, two or three days after the storm i i was in of all places california <laughs> when andrew hit so uh i came back to deal with the uh the consequences but uh great grandma was saying that uh they could only go one direction you know around and out so um yeah that was pretty uh fun like a little maze or something but uh irma was not so bad uh the streets were blocked but not heavily at least around us there's like one tree down um and then you just find another way and you're fine but that's what everybody does uh everybody once you know they're secure they go out and they survey the neighborhood on their own and it's okay to do that it's okay it's okay to go and look around your own neighborhood um because well you live there so you want to know what's going on then kind of venture out and this is when you're going to see uh, other people heading out and taking care of some things. So the first thing the people in the neighborhood are going to do is start to clear the streets in front of them because they're going to need them for access. You know, you know, we don't really wait for anybody to come and do this um, because, you know, most people can't wait. So it's easier just to grab the chainsaw, the gas powered chainsaw, of course, and just start cutting trees and moving them aside so everybody can just get around. And uh, people just sort of take this uh, on their own. Nobody needs to be told to do this. I guess we've developed a habit. Uh, fortunately, um, we've been fine. Um, the last major uh, loss we had with a very large, lovely tree fell inward <laughs> onto the grounds and not onto the street, uh, thankfully. So uh, we didn't really have to worry about that. But uh, if it happens, yeah, just go out there and cut it up and move it to the side just so people can get by and then kind of venture out. And then the first place that you go and check on after your neighborhood is uh, surveyed is uh, Publix. Yes, go to see if Publix is open. Well, go to see if they're open. They're probably not gonna be open, but go to see if the building looks intact because if it is intact, then, uh, okay, you know, a little bit of relief because in a few hours or maybe the next day, uh, they will be open. Uh, all their newer construction is very, very safe and secure, so um, they're going to be available. And then, of course, there are the other places like the CVS and all that kind of stuff. Make sure they're they're fine too. But as so long as Publix is <laughs> hasn't been blown away, yeah, uh, that's going to go a long way to helping the recovery. And uh, after that, venture around and see what else is going on. Uh, there are going to be some roads that are impassable uh, in Miami. Uh, well, it's where we live. It's very lush and very green, lots of trees everywhere. So our problem is the trees, not the water. Um, 
so we've never faced anything like uh, Captiva, where their whole causeway was washed out. Um, even, you know, uh, Irma, Andrew, all those other big storms, Wilma, Katrina, all the bridges to the islands around here were fine. Uh, I don't think anyone ever expected them to be damaged. So after you've surveyed your neighborhood, you've surveyed Publix, and then surveyed the wider area and, you know, started to watch the people sort of get everything cleaned up. Uh, then it's time to, well, figure out, do you have to go to work? And for a lot of people, yeah, uh, they do. Um, I have had to do that after various storms. I forget which one it was, but there was a storm a few years ago, Henry, it might have been, where uh, it wasn't predicted to strengthen, and it did. Unfortunately, it strengthened to a actual Category 1 hurricane while everyone was at work. <laughs> so, yes, uh, the word went out around midday. Okay, yeah, we're actually going to be hit by a hurricane. So everybody, go home. Yes, go drive home in the Category 1 hurricane. So <laughs> that's kind of what everybody did. And, uh, well, it came through. And then, of course, uh, everyone's like, okay, well, if you're doing good, uh, office is open. You know, see you tomorrow. It's just the way it is. You know, so, uh, yeah. And it was fine then. It's fine now. And uh, after all of this, if you find out you do have to go to work, don't have to go to work, then, uh, well, uh, things are going to start to happen. Now is when, you know, all the emergency services and everything start to, like, get into gear. Uh, there's videos out there of all the electrical convoys uh, that are preparing for this. And uh, I can tell you that uh, every lineman in the southeast, well, not in the southeast because of well, South Carolina, but every lineman in Florida, Georgia, probably Alabama, Mississippi, are in southwest Florida, central Florida, uh, repairing the electrical grid. Um, our power was fine. Uh, we had two brownouts, probably just the grid balancing itself uh, as as uh, losses were happening over in southwest Florida. So we actually didn't, we didn't lose electricity for longer than I'd Honestly, it wasn't even a minute, and that happened two or three times, so we're good. And so they're working very hard on that, and I will tell you that um, there's no favorites going on. They don't play favorites. Uh, the first to be re-energized, of course, are medical facilities, transportation hubs, emergency operations, things like that, larger facilities, you know, the, the critical infrastructure. And once that's done, and it's time to go out, businesses, residential, and everything like that. Uh, what they do is, and I, uh, an employee of the utility told me this flat out, they basically, they look at everybody that's, uh, whose power is out, and they prioritize it simply by the, if this fix, this fix will bring back the most people. That's it. There's really no other criteria. Unfortunately, or fortunately, if you're some kind of weirdo, uh, that means the people in the mm, well-to-do, low-density areas mm, are at the bottom of the list. <laughs> yes, uh, the worst was, um, I, I forget I forget which hurricane it was. It blew over a tree in the backyard, and it knocked down a power line that served a whopping two customers. Yes, us and our neighbor, that's it. So we were at the bottom of the list because uh, it's a line that had to be rehung and with two customers yeah we were not <laughs> we're not that important enough because it was only the two of us so if you can get to a place that's more crowded then um, you're going to do a lot better in fact Andrew after Andrew the palace was out for a month ish however uh, great auntie had her power back at her condo within a couple of days so, um, yeah, that's just how it worked because, uh, you know, they make one fix and boom, a whole bunch of customers come back online. That's, that's just how they do it. So, uh, boy. All right. Uh, now, now after you've surveyed all the damage, figured out your food situation, your water situation, your work situation, and what has to be done, uh, other things start to grind into gear. I talked about, uh, the utilities, uh, and then, uh, in a couple of days, right, it's going to take them a little bit, a, a, a little bit to coordinate, a, a, kind of. But uh, right now, uh, over in Southwest Florida, maybe in Central Florida, now every landscaper in the state is heading that direction to start clearing people's yards. And uh, what happens? You can clear your own yard. We've done a lot of clearing ourselves. Uh, and recently, though, uh, you know, just the landscapers—they come and they do it. Uh, they charge extra for it, of course. 
but um, you know, given just the amount of material that has to be picked up, uh, you know, I don't know that myself and <laughs> Grandma could do it uh, in time uh, for the pickups because what's going to happen is, at least in Dade County, the uh, county will organize, I think they did two pickups after Irma, one at two weeks and one at four weeks. So all you had to do was put all your debris on the street and they will come scoop it up and take it off. Uh, no charge. And that's how you kind of just get rid of everything. So uh, yeah, every landscaper in the state is going to be heading over there to start clearing away properties and getting it set up for the counties to uh, deal with. And this is going to make the biggest difference, just cleaning everything up. Um, and I'm going to say in a weird way, things, um, well, after a storm, I'm not going to talk about this one specifically, but after a storm, things kind of look worse than they are for a very specific reason that you kind of have to see to really grasp. And that's the wind has blown all the leaves off the trees and a bunch of dead trees doesn't look very good. So that's why the storm devastation kind of, you know, uh, looks really, really bad because the trees have no leaves. They will grow back. The trees will be fine. Uh, don't worry because, uh, well, that's kind of just what they do. I mean, I, I've, I've seen streets that were um, completely, they were shaded right before the hurricane. You could drive through. It was nice and lush and uh, it's a lovely Sunday drive type road. After the hurricane, bright sun everywhere because <laughs> all the leaves are gone. But uh, within the season, they'll be back. So, Yes, uh, landscapers are out there. Well, the linemen are out there, then the landscapers are out there, and then the county is going to come by and scoop everything up and take it away. And once that is done, once even that first round is done, things are going to look a lot better. You don't, you know, you have to see the before and after to really understand how much better you feel about where you are once a lot of this has been cleaned up because then it doesn't look like so much destruction. So uh, that's going to be happening very soon. What they're going to do with the material, I don't know. Here in Dade County, they burned it once, uh, but then some people got all up in arms about that. So I think they just dump it in the landfill and, you know, deal with it that way. So, uh, yeah. Um, oh, by the way, uh, welcome to Florida. And uh, <laughs> I will tell you one thing. If somebody does offer to clear your yard right after the storm, just wait just wait because the people that are paying for that now are way, way overpaying. Just wait a week, two weeks, the price will go down a lot. And, um, oh, another very, very important thing. It's okay to be relieved that the storm didn't hit you. It's perfectly fine. Your time will come. Believe me. Uh, you know, I've been through plenty of storms and, uh, well, this wasn't our turn, but next year, the year after, who knows what's going to happen and we'll just have to be ready for uh, what it is. And, uh, oh, just a, another point of order, uh, you know, obviously that's, you know, there's a lot of politicking going on, but the primary response is at the county level because uh, they're the ones that actually employ the people that own the trucks, they own the, the services, you know, the, <laughs> the landfills and all that kind of stuff. So, um, the uh, swiftness with which things are cleaned up is going to depend on how good your county is. Uh, and I will credit them, uh, Dade County, they actually did a good job. Uh, yes, they did. They could not fix a 200 meter strip of pavement in a park for five years, but somehow they managed to <laughs> do the two sweeps of cleanups in a very efficient uh, manner. And uh, it's quite a a thing to watch the, the dump trucks they just come they head into the neighborhood with a bunch of cranes and they just go down the street load 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 off it goes load 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 off it goes and they just then they go dump and they come back and just do it again until it's all gone so whatever okay and uh yeah like i said once everything's cleaned up it's going to look a lot better uh and it's going to be interesting seeing what's done with all of the boats that are on land now they're it's it's fine you people might think, oh my God, what are they going to do? There's there's ways of picking those up and either refloating them or repairing them or maybe just scrapping them depending on uh, what happens. Uh, oh, the boats that you see that are like back in in uh, the mangroves, the trees, a lot of them were actually taken back there and anchored back there to keep them away from the dock and everything like that. So um, they it looks like a lot like a lot of them did break loose, but a lot of them were anchored and moored there intentionally. 
uh, to keep them away from basically other boats. So uh, some of those, it might just be a matter of pulling them off the mangroves and back into the water. And, <clears throat> you know, maybe they're, maybe they're fine. That's how a lot of them, I think, got back there. People do that around here um, over by Gables Waterway, which you saw in the other video. Uh, if there's a big hurricane coming, a lot of people will just bring the boats in there and, you know, tie up because that's, that's a very safe place to be for a boat. So, oh boy. All right. Uh, oh, I did see my old marina in one video, perfectly intact. Building looked like nothing had happened to it. So if I did still have the boat in there, it would be okay, which is kind of a relief for me, but I don't know, glad I sold it. Oh boy. Well, welcome to Florida. If this is your first hurricane, uh, it won't be your last and uh, I just want to let everybody know that uh, the people in Southwest Florida, well, it's there's a lot of pieces to pick up, but, um, you know, I have to say this isn't our first rodeo and we will somehow, well, we'll, we'll get through it all because we have plenty of times before. It's still a beautiful place to live. I would not want to live anywhere else. And yes, um, warnings help. Earthquakes? Yeah. Tornadoes? No, 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 no. Give me, give me a week of warning. For a hurricane any any day so well i wish them well and uh hopefully they'll be back on their feet uh sometime very very soon a lot of incentive uh the tourist season uh is actually the winter here so got a lot to look forward to and uh yeah well i'm gonna stay away from the area i'm headed to orlando they're fine the parks are open you know they weren't they were hit with like a, basically a category one storm which is not <laughs> relatively uh, not that much. So they're all good. And, uh, well, I'll be waiting to hear from the, the people in Fort Myers, see how they're doing. And, uh, well, we wish you all well. And, uh, yeah, coming from Miami where, well, we didn't really have much to endure in seeing what happened over in a place that I, I know very well. I, this time in particular, can say and absolutely mean it that I am thankful for my problems.